E46 Turbo Build Part 3. Today, I want to talk about the intake manifold in which I'll be using for this turbocharger conversion and how I'm going to prepare it for boost. Before that happens, though, I want to reinstall the transmission in which I removed in the last video. Come on, baby. I'm not gonna hurt you. Let me give you a big old bear hug. Okay, so as far as the clutch pedal, with the twin disc clutch we installed in the last video, the pedal feels great. It is just a little bit stiffer than factory. It's not ridiculous. For a twin disc clutch, that feels pretty nice actually. We also serviced the transmission with brand new uh, shifting detents. So let's see how that feels. No more fifth gear lean, it springs right back. So that's pretty nice. Yeah. Feels great. It is now intake manifold time. What I have right here is a M50 intake manifold, which has become very popular amongst various builds out there. It is going to perform very well in the higher rev range, simply because of these large long runners for the intake. It is a very simple intake manifold, lightweight, simplistic, and it bolts up to an E46 with not much modification. Now, realistically, the only time that this intake manifold really shines is during those high bouts of RPM. Not so much the lower or mid-range RPM, as it's not really designed for that. For the time being, though, we are going to set this aside. Now, for this iteration of the Turbo E46, we're going to run a M54 B30 intake manifold, which can easily support 500 wheel horsepower with some modifications. There are further positives to this intake manifold, including different length runners. We have these shorter fat runners along the bottom, as well as these longer skinnier runners up top, which means we can have power across the whole rev range. Allow me to explain. I am sure you guys recognize this. This is the DISA, which helps regulate the airflow through the intake manifold. When it comes to boosted applications, so many people out there are very quick to delete this and block that off the hole right here, which it goes into, it can actually help the turbo spool faster, as well as retain functionality of both intake runners. How it operates is this flap right here is going to directly change the pathway for the airflow of the intake manifold. During lower and mid-range RPM, the engine will be using this runner right here, the short fat one, which is good for torque and bottom end power. Now, around 4,000 RPM, a little bit over, this DISA is going to actuate and then allow the engine to breathe through these longer runners, which is better for the top end RPM. So retention of the DISA can actually help you big time when it comes to boosted applications. I recommend rebuilding it with a aluminum kit. Typically I buy them from German Auto Solutions. You may have heard of the horror stories of this pin, this metal pin coming out and going into the engine. Now, if you look inside of the intake manifold where the DISA goes, it is actually molded to surround the DISA. So for that metal pin to become separated and go into the intake manifold, it would take a lot of neglect and there would be obvious signs ahead of time. Because I see people always complaining about that being an issue, but it's very, it's not as common as you think. When it comes to preparation of this intake manifold for boost, I like to remove the CCB system as it was never intended to see positive pressure. So I will unbolt it. The oil separator itself right here is going to fasten right here onto the intake manifold and then all the associated vacuum pipes and everything. I just get rid of all this. Also the vacuum distribution rail, which mounts up here and goes to these ports. It has O-rings sealing it. This can cause issues with boost leaks. So remove this and plug up the holes. I will be showing the delete process within this video. Moving on to the very back of the intake manifold, 
we have these three vacuum ports here. From factory, they are used for several things on the M54 cars. One will be used for the secondary air pump solenoid, and the other small one can be used for the muffler flap vacuum canister. And then this one will be capped from factory on cars with the M54 engine. And then cars with the M52 TU engine are going to have this vacuum elbow right here, which goes on this port, which is for the EVAP system. Now, if you wish to retain that, you can put a check valve between this intake manifold, so under boost it will shut, because you do not want to put positive pressure backwards through this line, okay? Now, as far as boost proofing, I went ahead and I capped this one off with some, with some RTV. You can do some other things too, but this thing is really on there. It should not blow off. I'm going to use this one right here for my, for my boost gauge, and then this one, I'm going to cut some threads into it and put a bolt so I can easily uncap it for future use. Okay, so this vacuum port right here, I took a drill and I drilled it up the very next size and I'm going to tap it out for an M6 bolt. If you plan to use these smaller vacuum ports, I recommend to take a drill bit and clean them out the whole way into the intake manifold to make sure they are free of any debris. This vacuum port may appear bigger, but deep inside the vacuum port is the same exact size as these two, which is tiny. So if you plan to use this one, also make sure it is cleaned out and free of debris. Here's a quick pro tip. Whenever you're tapping holes, like I currently am, you never want to run the tap the whole way in within one pass. You want to do a couple turns like that, and then you want to back it out a few turns. Whenever you do that, you are ensuring that the newly cut threads are being cut cleanly and won't be all jacked up. Okay, and there we go. We now have some threads cut into the vacuum port. I'm going to take this bolt and put some thread sealant on it. And then simply thread it in. Moving on to the very bottom of the intake manifold, we have these two large ports. This one is for the brake booster hose. This one is another EVAP port, which is used for the purge solenoid. Now the brake booster hose is going to have this. It's known as a suction jet pump. We can delete that for this scenario. I've done it in the past with no ill effect. I am actually going to not use this entire hose. I'm going to install some silicone hose instead. And then at the very end of this vacuum hose, I'm going to retain and use the original check valve which is directly at the brake booster. This is a one-way valve that will shut once it sees positive pressure. That is what you want. A proper fitting silicone hose actually requires no hose clamps. As you can see, this is a very tight fit. I'm using 3 8 down here. As far as this vacuum port goes, it originally gets a hose like this, which goes to this purge solenoid here. If you plan to keep this purge solenoid, definitely want to put a check valve between this and the intake manifold because once again, you do not want to send boost backwards through this. They tend to leak boost, which will pressurize the line that enters it from this side. Ask me how I know. In this case, I'm going to plug it with a bolt. Okay, so here we have the mating surface to the cylinder head where the gasket goes into. You want to make sure you have all six of these still intact because they easily can pop out and go missing. They look like this. Now on the throttle body side of the intake manifold, here is your throttle body port, and then here is a port for the idle control valve, which looks like this. There is also this grommet that goes in here, 
that is what seals the idle control valve to the intake. Now, personally, for this car, I'm going to delete the idle control valve because that gets rid of a possible boost leak point. Normally, without this, you could argue that the engine would idle very erratically, right? That is not true because what happens is the throttle body will then become responsible for controlling the idle, which you or your tuner can configure that whenever you are tuning the car. Now, do note, if you're using this right here, this is a throttle body from the M52 TU engine. It's a hybrid, meaning it uses a cable and drive-by wire. This cannot be used with an ICB delete. So, this will only work for MS-43 and MS-45 cars only. When it comes to plugging off this hole, I use one of these expanding plugs right here, which is meant for engine blocks. It's going to be Dorman part number 02601. I discovered this years ago by taking an intake manifold to a part store and trying various plugs, and this, this one fits perfect. It is simply a matter of removing this grommet, then you will install this plug by pushing it into the intake manifold. It's going to be a tight fit, which is what you want. Ideally, you don't want to put the whole way flush into the intake. Leave a little bit hanging out just like that. A little bit of red Loctite won't hurt nobody. Thread on the nut. And then tighten it up. Before doing something like this, it is good practice to contact your tuner and ask them ahead of time if they're okay with deleting this. Or if you are DIY tuning, then that's up to you. Throttle body. So the throttle body I have here is from a M54 B30. We're going to make one simple modification to it, which is grinding down these little pieces of metal here, these fins or tabs, whatever you want to call them. They are alignment tabs for the stock intake boot. The reason why we're going to grind those down is because whenever we go to turbocharging or supercharging, regardless, whenever the engine is under boost, the coupler can pop off the throttle body. So we grind down those fins right here so we can seat the coupler deeper onto the throttle body and then clamp it up here. Just like that, and now as you can see, instead of this far on, it can go now that far on. Now under boost, this has very less likelihood of popping off. On the very top of the intake manifold, we have a port right here, which is for the temperature sensor. This is going to monitor the intake temperature. Going to make sure the O-ring is nice and clean, and I'm probably going to put some RTV on there just for extra security so it doesn't leak during boost. Typically these give no problem, but it's better safe than sorry. Now I'm going to show you the removal of the CCV vacuum distribution rail. I did that before I took off the intake manifold from the car. I want to remove this vacuum distribution rail which was for the CCB system. We're going to remove this rail and we're going to plug the ports of the intake manifold. To remove it, we have four T25 screws. There we go. All we have to do now is take this tap, tap out these six vacuum ports, and then install some plugs here. I'm using a quarter inch NPT tap and quarter inch NPT plugs. There is no need to drill these holes out because they are already the proper size. See that? 7 16 or 11 millimeters. They are already the proper size. So all we have to do is tap the holes. And being plastic, it's pretty easy to do. Okay, so there we go. You can now see the threads that were cut into the intake manifold. 
Now, all we have to do is install the plugs. I'm going to put some sealant on them, some thread sealant. And there we go, we now have those ports all plugged up and they should not leak. And just like that, we now have a M54B30 intake manifold, which is prepared for boost. Retaining the DISA, ICV deleted and sealed off, using the original throttle body, silicone coupler, slid onto it with a T-bolt clamp so it cannot pop off while under boost. Brake booster hose is now silicone, with the original check valve at the brake booster. I will tell you this, whatever hose you decide to use for your brake booster, make sure it is stiff and good quality. That is because your typical rubber hose will get soft when it gets warm and it can easily collapse shut whenever it's under vacuum. So going to a quality silicone hose or any hose that's reinforced, it will prevent it from collapsing shut. This hose right here is for my boost gauge. I pre-installed it because it fits very tight onto that vacuum port. It would have been a pain trying to feed the hose onto it with the intake manifold installed into the car. Meanwhile, this bigger vacuum port has been plugged with a bolt. However, in the future, if we need another vacuum source, we simply remove the bolt. Along with this other EVAP vacuum port, which has also been blocked off with a bolt. Long story short, you want to simplify the intake manifold to keep the possibility of boost and vacuum leaks from happening. That is all for today's video. In the next one, we're going to install this intake manifold and then we're going to talk about the fuel system, probably install it, the fuel pump, fuel injectors, and the fuel pressure regulator. It's going to be exciting stuff. I'll see you in that video. Catch you later.